Uh, jump over to chapter 11 and get a few things that are going to help us through the rest of chapter 10. Uh, the rest of chapter 10 talks about solving quadratics that are not necessarily factorable. Some of them can be factored using the X method, but some of them can't be. And one of the ways to do that is that square roots or radicals need to work for that. Uh, so radicals are uh, square roots. Uh, if you get into algebra two, you might deal with a larger root like a cube root or a uh, fourth root or something like that in algebra two. Everything we'll be dealing with. When I say radical, I'm talking about a square root. A radical or square root. That's that's what we're talking about today. Okay, and it's just going to be of some sort of number. And what we're going to do is simplify it. So that we get an exact solution, not a decimal approximation for that, because decimal approximations uh, can sometimes uh, be good, but sometimes they're not uh, helpful as far as uh, if we need to do something with that solution at the end. Uh, especially in geometry, which will be the next math class you can take next year. Uh, when you do some things with right triangles, uh, if you get a decimal approximation, it can change one of the other values out of that. So that can, having the exact value is kind of an important thing. So we're going to work on doing that today and uh, building up to jump back into chapter 10 uh, soon. Okay, so simplifying radical expressions is what we're going to do today. So fourth block thought this was not too bad. So I think you'll you'll think it's not too bad either. So our job is to simplify, and we'll start with one that I think everybody knows. The square root of 25. Why? Because it's 5 times 5. And this is where I introduce the way that I teach how to simplify radicals, which I think is an easier method than knowing all your square numbers. Because memorizing all the square numbers, once you think you got them all, then there's another one that you didn't know. Okay, so the way that I do that is using factor trees. Y'all remember doing factor trees, uh, maybe in elementary school, where you say what times what gives me 25, and in our case, it's 5 times 5. We're taking a square root. So if you're taking a square root, we're looking for things that are squared. When things are squared, they're sets of 2, right? 5 times 5 is a set of 2. So there's a set of 2 5s in that factor tree. That's why the square root of 25 is 5. What we're going to see when we do a little more, I, I won't say complicated problem because 12 is not a really complicated number, right? It's a pretty small number. But the fact that it doesn't have a nice square root, square root of 12, it's somewhere between 3 and 4. We know that, right? Because square root of 9 is 3, square root of 16 is 4. 12 is in between 9 and 16, so it's somewhere in there. But to get the exact value, you want to do a factor tree for that number. So what two numbers multiply to be 12? 3 and 4 would be one option. You could also use what? 6 and 2. It doesn't matter what option you use there if there's more than one option. Here, 3 and 4 works great. If you use 6 and 2, it's going to work as well. Because when you're doing a factor tree, Three is what kind of number? Prime. Four is a non-prime number, which is called a what? What's it called if something's not prime? It's uh, it is rational, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's not prime. Starts with a C. Composite number. Four is a composite number. So if we have a composite number, we need to break it apart. Anytime it's a number that's not prime. You break it apart. What does four break into? Two and two. And I'm writing it in. It ain't showing up. Awesome. Yeah, me too. It's just Why is it two? Because we have a pair of twos. So anything that's in a pair comes out to the outside. Anything that's not in a pair stays on the inside, okay? Because four, what's the square root of four? Two, right? Four goes into 12, right? It's a square number that divides into 12. 
that we can take the square root of. It goes into 12 three times. So the square root of four is two, that's on the outside, and the three on the inside. One method is to divide by square numbers, but that requires you to know all your square numbers that ever existed or will exist. And that's a, a lengthy list of memorized facts. Some of you do well with memorized facts. I don't, okay? My six-year-old does. He can memorize a lot of things really fast. And it's scary, but... Two radical three is the answer. Yes, ma'am. You're gonna as we do more of these, you're gonna see what's going on here. So, so I, we're gonna do several. So, eighteen. Think about eighteen is a composite number, right? So it breaks down. What's one way that eighteen might break down? Six times three is one way. So I could do a factor tree with six and three, and then which one of those breaks down? Six becomes. Three and two, right? Now, we're looking for sets of two because it's a square root. Is there a set of two in this? Here's one three. Here's another three. Together, that's a set of two. Right? They don't have to be beside one another. As long as they, you count two of them in a set. So three is what comes outside. The two that doesn't have a partner goes back on the inside. And that's that's the answer. Three radical two. Six doesn't six is a composite number. You don't look at the composite numbers in a factor tree. You only look at the prime parts. Okay, only look at the prime numbers, the ends of your factor tree. Only look at the ends. Don't look at the numbers that are above it. Oh, so then you don't anything else that's composite. Yes. Yeah. Let's do like 48. It's a nice composite number. What are some things that multiply to be 48? Six times eight is a good way. That's a good, you know, typical multiplication facts that you should know, right? How does six break down? Three and two. Now, that's as far as six goes. It's three times two. We we only look at the three and two from now on. The six doesn't exist anymore. As long as they multiply to be the number above them, it doesn't matter. Like if you, I we use six and eight here. You could use four and twelve. It doesn't matter which set you use as long as they multiply to be this. Okay, six. And, I'll I'll do this one again with a different set to start off with to show you that it ends up being the same thing. Eight breaks down into. Two and four, right? Or four and two. Doesn't matter which way you put that. And four breaks down into another two and two. So we look for sets of two. There's one set of two. There's two sets of twos. So that means how many twos are coming to the outside? Two of them. And you multiply them together. What's left on the inside? I heard a four. I heard a three. Why not? Why not four? Because it's composite, right? Composite numbers, don't they don't exist anymore. So a three is the only prime number that's not in a pair. Okay, so then we work that out. What's two times two? Four, Four radical three. All right, example E is going to be the same problem, but we're going to start it with a different number pairing. No, you can do that part in your head. That's fine. So Haley said, well, how do I know what numbers to use? Well, we use 6 and 8 on example D. Example E, I'm going to use a different set to multiply to be 48. What, what an, what's another way to, to multiply to be 48 besides 6 times 8? 4 times 12. Just a different way. They still multiply to be 48. That's the key. If they don't do that, then you're doing it wrong. If they multiply to be that number up there, then you're doing it right. Okay? How does four break down? Two and two. How about 12? Four and three or? Or six and two. It doesn't matter which way you break the 12 down. Four and three works fine. Four breaks down into another two and another two. Right? 
How many pairs of twos do we have? Two pairs of twos and one three left over. Same answer, two times two, radical three. That's four radical three. Even though we started with a different number here, it's still multiplied to be 48. So it doesn't matter what you start with here, as long as it multiplies to be the number up, up in the beginning. Okay. It does the same on the 12. It does the same thing. Once you break that down at 6 and 2, then 6 breaks down into 3 and 2, right? You still get a pair of 2s and a 3. So no matter which way you break down the 12, whether you use 6 and 2 or 4 and 3, you still get a pair of 2s and a 3 out of it. So, yeah, but like, you're not... Guys, remember, composite numbers don't matter at, in the factor tree. I did right here. Yeah, but there's not another thing about there. This is... That doesn't exist. I was answering her question. Okay. The pairs. This pair of twos gets me that two. This pair of twos gets me that two. Okay, those go on the outside and you multiply them together. So that's where I'm getting four. The three that's, that's still out here, that three is that three that's on the inside. That's where that's where all of those pieces are coming from. Okay. What about the square root of thirty six? We know that's six, right? What if we just didn't know that that was six? What if we didn't know that six times six was thirty six? What's another multiplication that gets us thirty six? Three times 12. Maybe that's the one we think of first. Well, is three composite or prime? Prime, so we don't we don't mess with it. 12 is composite. How does 12 break down again? Yeah, two and six or three and four. It doesn't matter which. And six is two and three. So for this one, you got a pair of twos, and then you got a pair of threes. So that's really two times three, which is where the six really comes from, with the square root of that. If it's a square number and you know the square root of it, you don't have to do the factor tree. Like, we know that the square root of 25 is five. We know the square root of 16 is four. You don't have to do the factor tree when it's nice numbers like that. The factor tree is there for numbers that are not nice, like 48 or like this one, 108. What do we know about 108? 12 times 9? Y'all agree? Hope so, because that's right. Is that the only way you can get 108? No. There's a lot of other ways to get 108. You could do 2 times 54. You could do uh, 3 times 36. There's a lot of ways to get 108. 9 and 12 is the most common that you'll see. Well, does nine break down? Three and three. What about 12? We've been doing 12 a lot. Either four and three or two and six. It doesn't matter. Now, let's get our pairs. There's a set of threes. There's a set of twos. So what goes on the outside? Two times three. What's on the inside? That three right there that doesn't have a buddy, okay? What's two times three? Six. So it's six radical three. It's okay. Yes. Radicals and square roots are the same thing. It's not hard. You just got to learn the process. 
132. Big numbers make it harder because you got to oh. think. But don't overthink it. It's 12 times 11. 11 times 12, 12 times 11. Whichever way you want to do it. What if I didn't know my 11's time tables? You would be, but what kind of number is 132? It's an even number, which means it's divisible by what? Two. Two. So I could break it down with two, and how many times does two go into 132? Well, two goes into 13 six times, right, with one left over, and into 12 six more times. And then what do I know about 66? <laughs> It's 11 times 6, yeah. And then we got 6 is 2 and 3. If you did 11 and 12 right here, you still end up with the same prime pieces. 1, 2 twos, and an 11, and a 3. No matter which way you broke down, as long as this multiplies to be 132, it works. So there's a pair of twos, right? So there's a two on the outside. Is there anything else that goes on the outside? No. What's on the inside? Anything else? Is there any other prime factor that's not in a pair? That three right there. So there's an 11 and a three on the inside. So that turns it back into 33, 2 radical 33. Bigger numbers, yes, are a little bit more difficult, but not impossible. Do another bigger one, 216. So that's an I. J's go the other direction. It's okay. Oh, please don't say you didn't know. I didn't. I didn't know, but I didn't. Just quit talking. Stop. <laughs> Incriminate yourself. All right. So, what do we know about two hundred sixteen? It's an even number. It's an even number. What? How much? Seven times thirty. How did you How did you know that off the bat? He just guessed at a seven going into it, right? I hope he guessed. Yeah, I mean that's that's one way to do it. I know four goes into it because the last two digits are sixteen, and sixteen is divisible by four. That's one of those divisibility rules that that you can do that. If you know it's even, then start with that. All right. So two and one hundred eight works. We're going to see, Caleb, go ahead and do your factor tree with the 7 and the, and the, it's not 7 times 30, though, because that'd be 210. Well, 7 even, I don't think 7 even go into that. Yeah. If it were 210, you'd have been correct, but it's, it's 2, 216. 108, what do we know about that one? Yeah, we've already, it's an even number, it's also 12 times 9. 9 is 3 and 3. 2 and 6. Three and two. So I've got my factor tree for 216 done. Start looking for sets of two. Okay. I got a set of two threes right there. There's a set of twos right here. This two and this two. This three doesn't have anybody. This two here doesn't have anybody. Yeah. Six radical six. It's not. It's not. This is not. Uh. <laughs> Let's go to a smaller number, something a little easier. Listen here. <laughs> Y'all quit poking. How's 27 break down? Nine times three? Nine is... Now, 
It's all threes there. All right, so we're looking for sets of how many? Two. It doesn't matter which two you pick. I'm going to pick these two that are already naturally together. Right? So that's three, square root of three, or radical three. Say it either way you want to. Now we're about to put letters in it. But I think the letters are easier, honestly. Memphis. This, the factor tree, 27 is 3 cubed. That's the same thing. But as far as the, the radicals, if you put that under a square root, then it still ends up being 3 square root of 3 out of that. And when we do variables, you'll see why that happens that way. It's easier to do with variables than it is with numbers. It just doesn't make sense to do that with numbers. Let's, um, here's what I want to show you as a means of checking here is, you know, y'all always want to say, can I change it to a decimal? Well, yeah, but not for an answer. You can check it with a decimal though, right? So with the calculator, one of these blue ones does it, uh, the square root of 27. So to get a square root, you hit second, and then the squared button. It's the same way on the blue little blue ones here. And I type in the 27, hit enter. I get that decimal, 5.192, blah, 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 bunch of stuff after that, right? What's three square root of three? It should be the same thing, right? Because that's what we simplified it to be. Three square root of three. Same number. Okay, so how you can check your square root simplifying by doing that. Whatever you start with, the original problem, then what after you simplified it, type that in, see if it gives you the same decimal. If it doesn't, something went wrong in your simplifying. Okay? All right, now, let's throw some letters in there. Well, we'll do one more without letters then. I don't wanna do letters yet. But guess what, you still gotta do letters. Well, I'll get you there in a second. Negative 3, square root of 84. So this one has a number out in the front first. Negative 3, square root of 84. So that negative 3 is out there on the outside. Do we do a factor tree for the thing on the outside? No, because what are we taking the square root of? 84, the one on the inside. So let's break it down the same way we've been doing it. Okay. So, how do you break down 84? Twelve and something, but not eight. Seven. We've done twelve a whole lot today, and that's not by I didn't mean to, I guess so, you know. Subconsciously, we did twelve a lot. What's the pairs? You got a pair of twos, right? What goes to the outside then? All right. The negative three was already there. What's it do with the two? Multiplies. What's left on the inside? Three times seven, which we know is? Try again. 21. And then... Well, negative three times two. All right, so this th negative three, it was just there. It's waiting for you to do something with the square root of 84. So we broke down 84 with the factor tree like we've been doing. Nothing different about that. We had a pair of twos. These twos is that two right there. That pair of twos got me that two that's on the outside. The negative three is the negative three that was already there, okay? So anything that's already out there, just leave it there and then go get everything else you need, okay? Then, this three here didn't have a buddy. This seven didn't have a buddy. So they had to stay in. So three and seven stay inside because they're prime numbers who did not break down. 
didn't have a partner to be a, a pair. So three times seven, that's the 21. The negative three that was already there times the two we brought out gets me the negative six. Okay, so anytime there's something already out there, let it sit there. Let them wait on you. Okay? And, and get everything done with the radical first. Okay. All right, let's throw some letters in there. One letter on here. In just a second. All right. What does X cubed even mean? X times X times X. There's three of them, right? Yep. One times one times one. X times X times X. Mm. All right. So if there are three X's there, how many pairs or sets of two is there? One set of twos. One set of two, right? This pair gets me the X that's on the outside. This is the X that's on the inside. Now, that's the long way about doing it. Okay? The way that I do it is I look at that and say, okay, I'm taking the square root. I'm looking for pairs. How many are in a pair? Two, right? What's three divided by two? How many times does two go into three? One time, right? That's the one X that's on the outside. What's the remainder when you divide three by two? One, that's the one that's left on the inside. I do division by two with the exponents. All right, let's look at a, one that's different. X to the fifth. How many times does two go into five? Twice. So how many X's are on the outside? Two. So that's X squared. What's the remainder when you divide five by two? Yeah, one. So there's one X left on the inside. Let's do another one then. Let's say it's x to the 13th. How many times does 2 go into 13? Six times with how many left over? One left over, right? So that'd be x to the 6th square root of x. Oh, so how close can you get to that number? Absolutely. So if we had y to the 8th, how many times does 2 go into 8? Four times. What's the remainder? There ain't one. Zero, right? So it's just y to the fourth. No remainder means there's nothing left inside of the radical. Okay? You're taking the exponent that's on the inside, and you're dividing it by 2 every time. To do a, because it's a square root. Square roots are squared. Squared is two, right? The little exponents are two. So that's why you're dividing by two. 13 divided by two, it goes six times with one left over. So the six is how many times it went into it, there was one left over. Okay? All right. The next one. I don't intend to. All right, what if they put two letters in there? Still the same idea, though. How many times does two go into six? Three times. Three times. So X to the what's on the outside? X to the third on the outside. How many times does two go into seven? Three times. So that's Y to the square root. It's a square root, so that's the two. So y to the third on the outside, is there a remainder? One what? Y, because there wasn't a remainder on the x's. So the square root of y is left. And that's it.
I, it, they're not bad. Let's say we had x to the eleventh, uh, y to the sixth, z. This this z. So that'd be x to the fifth on the outside, y to the third. Z comes outside. What's the exponent on z? One. Does two go into one? No. So so it goes zero times. So there's no z's on the outside. So it goes on the inside. Good. What else is in there? An x. Throw a number in there with it. Like 44. X to the ninth. Y to the eighth. So, what do we do with the 44? We can do 11 and 4 or 2 and 22. And it ends up being 2, 2, and 11, no matter which way you started. Right? What's the pair? There are twos. So that means what comes on the outside? Two. How many X's come out? Why? Explain to us why. Yeah, two goes into nine four times. How many Y's? Four. four, because two goes into eight four times. What's left on the inside? Are there any Y's left? No, no remainder was zero, right? What else is left on the inside? Eleven, because there was a number there that didn't have a buddy. So he's got to be on the inside, too. Yeah, it's, it looks like that's just incredible hard, but it's not. It's just factor trees and dividing by two. Let's do this one. Last one. 384, x to the fourth, y to the 17th. 384. Yeah, it's a pretty big number. Uh, not enough to live off of. That says million after it. You gotta keep working. Like what? They said three eighty four is a big number. I said not enough to live off of. Unless it's three hundred eighty four million dollars, and then you could probably quit working. I would. I would. I would. I would. I would. see you guys again. <laughs> All right, now let's break it down. What's three eighty four breakdown x? A little difficult here because it's a big number, right? Yeah, you can use calculator, but it's even, right? Yeah. Two goes into it. Two goes into three one time with one left over. It goes into 18 nine times. It goes into four two times. That's 192. 192 is even. Yeah. And two goes into 19 nine times with one left over. And that would be 12. Two goes into 12 six times. 96 is even. Four, eight. And now I got 48. I know something about 48, right? Besides that it's even. It's four and 12, right? That's two and two. And then 12 is six and two, right? All right, so we got our factor tree going there. We got twos right, those are twos. They don't look like it, but they're twos. So I'm gonna get pairs. I'm just gonna start here. There's a pair of twos up there. There's a pair of twos right here. There's a pair of twos right there. One, two, three twos. Where do they go? 
outside. Two times two times two. What's left on the inside as far as numbers go? Nope, those are composite. This two right here, that three right there, right? Okay. Now, let's get the variables. How do we do that? So that means what? Okay. Why do the eighth on the outside? How many are left of what? One Y, no X's? I'm asking. No, because two went into four evenly, right? So there can't be any left over. Two goes into 17. Thanks, sir. Uh, two goes into 17 eight times with one left over, so there's a Y left over on the inside. Now we just got to button this up here. Two times two times two is eight X squared Y to the eight. Square root of two times three is six Y. Okay. That is as hard as they get. Keep in mind you have a day off tomorrow. So let's try to get this done. Today we'll come back to on Wednesday, go from there.